welcome back to the spider's web and at the end of the last video for the painting of the um, plague faction I gave you the choice between painting these two young chappies or this athletic young chappie now I apologize if I get your name pronunciation wrong Funmamiji I'm hoping that's correct is the only person who's uh, given any feedback on this and wanted to see this one painted well fair enough now we've already done this one so I think a different colour to this um, will be in order now I've done one um, of the terrain piece terrain buildings oh well, sorry start that one again I've done one of the buildings um, this colour the other one I've done in shades of green so we'll do we'll transfer that over to here so we'll do this one in green okay so how I do sorry how I do this is and I've just, just realised I've got the wrong paints out <laughs> Trust me, I think I have anyway. No, I haven't. I don't think I have. Right, so we'll start off using Castellan Green. <coughs> and we're doing dry brushes straight down. <coughs> <coughs> Oh dear, right. Okay, so as I said, we're doing dry brushes straight down. There we go. You can just about see the, the green paint. We'll go over this as well in the green. Um, everywhere you can see a surface gets done in green but obviously we are not looking towards covering up all the black we're just putting another colour over the top, that's all we're doing um, not hiding it. Oops, I'm going the wrong way. I'm supposed to go up and down. Okay, so that's that piece done. <coughs> Sorry, that's that part done. Next, we're going to be using, and I'll just, oops, show you. We're using Elysian Green for this next step and this is much more um, a stricter dry brush than the previous one because what we're trying to do is just pick out um, areas of shape with this rather than applying colour like so So the idea is, with this one, we're just trying to sort of get the edge edges highlighted, um, we're not going over every little detail, oops, I'm sorry about that, <coughs> we're not going over every little detail with this, we just want the upper edges of the, the moulded patterns here. covered and the same on here uh, the back with it being flat we can just oops we can just do that but it might be an idea just to do the circular movements on the back with it being uh, 
with it being a flat surface that way it's not um, because we're not picking out any uh, detail or pattern in it and here we can do that. so I'm hoping you've managed to see all that we can just go over a little bit here and there there we go I've done the original one in different colours I did it in the uh, goblin green uh, or the cast iron green the goblin green or the goblin green and scorpion green I'm not exactly certain which but it doesn't matter because we don't have to do it exactly the same way um, this one we're going to do some of the design a slightly different colour um, here we've done on the original building um, where it was blue or where the main part of the building was blue I've done green um, designs in it um, on this I've done red so you see I've not done I've not gone exactly um, to match so what we're going to do with this one is we're going to use blues in fact no we're not we're going to use purple we're going to use purple hmm now I do have Xerxes purple we use a different brush and we'll follow the same rules that we've done here uh, for the same design these four panels will be a different colour there we go so and what we can do as well is with a fine detail brush is go over the indentations here um, black that's if you so wish um, I don't know whether I did that on the original I think I did so I will be doing it again on this one but you don't you don't have to do it uh, it's not vitally important but it might just make it look a little better and then it's going to be washed over anyway so if you want the grubby effect um, we can wash over it if you don't want the grubby effect again you don't have to you can do it any way you see fit after all if you bought the model you can paint it whichever way you want to I'm just showing you how I'm painting mine I go through this and quite often I go through sorry I'll start again I go through this uh, explanation quite often in my uh, videos because I want you to understand that these are not showing you how they must should be painted must be painted or anything else these are showing you how I am painting them and giving you ideas as to how to paint them and more importantly trying to encourage you to pick up your paintbrushes and paint them okay so I've put a little bit of purple on the palette I'm now going to add a little bit of Screaming Skull to lighten it up a bit I don't use white because that, make, that can make it a little bit too stark a little bit too bright and that's not the kind of effect I'm looking for with this I just want a slightly muted paler colour um, you'll never very well I'm saying you'll never you'll, it's very rare you'll see me use white to lighten up um, a main colour you'll see me use it in the uh, on the plague for the red to make pink but that's because I want a pink colour and I don't have a pot of pink so that's the reason why you'll see me use red sorry why you see me use white for doing that it's because I want to change the colour of the red completely but uh, that's the only reason I'm using white for that um, if I wanted to just lighten the shade of the red I would use again the um, Screaming Skull so there we go we've lightened that a little bit and now we can add a little bit more to add a further level of paleness and we'll go halfway through that and again here and 
and you may notice them starts on the inside and working out that's because I don't want a uniform colour sorry a, a uniform edge I want it slightly um, wavy so I can alter where the um, here at the bottom edge I can adjust where the pale colour is going I just want to make sure that that top edge is covered ok there we go so we have the three shades there and next the final part of this to be honest is the bit that I said is entirely optional we get the Abaddon Black what there is of it in here I'm going to have to get some more but we bring the brush to a point and we just go over the recesses just to give that look of uh, just that clean look to the edges and uh, obviously if you want to use a finer brush to do this um, use whichever brush you, f you feel comfortable in using um, you don't have to use the same brush as I'm using as I said take the ideas and run with them and that's the best way of saying um, how to approach your models as you paint them because as I said they're your models so there we go I should darken the back up a little bit so it gives it a much crisper look to the green there. and the next part of this is obviously let it dry give it a wash um, and then apply the basing medium that's the base taken care of go away go away and go away what we need now is our red we need our white we need our scorpion green we need our caliban green and we need our yellow alrighty then let's get on with it because we're painting the man himself and I use the word man quite wrongly okay starts off with the red same as always uh, this time we're using Wazdaka it's a little bit darker but uh, gives quite a nice uh, finish and we just slap the paint on and as always with this it's where the fleshy parts are not the whole model um, I think I'm going to be changing brushes very soon very soon very soon turning into uh, Sean Connery putting an H after me, yes he's um, yeah I'm going to be changing my brush very soon because this one's splaying out a little too much and I don't want all the black areas covered as you well know so we'll ditch that one and use the one we'll be using for the base which is a much finer tip 
will have much control over where the much more control over where the paint is going with this. Unless of course my hand suddenly has a a wobble as it is prone to do and I end up putting a line right across an area that should be black which if you've seen my painting videos before you will know that that is entirely possible thanks to the unique way in which my body decides to screw me over <laughs> oh dear right Um, okay, so as I said, we're doing all the um, all the um, fleshy parts: hands, face, head, um, some parts of the, his side and stomach. I don't think I'll be doing his stomach, will it? It's not. I think that's all build up of bony stuff. Yeah, it is like a bony plate. So we're doing his side. Um, I think. There we go. That's about right. Need to add a touch of red in there. And I'll splash a little bit on these uh, on the bony parts, but that can't be helped in a situation like that because there's not much space there to uh, get your brush in. So perhaps a finer detailed brush would have been a much better option, but not to worry. Yeah, so if you do make mistakes it's it's acrylic paint so it's easily rectifiable. Um, you, you don't have to, you know you, you, there's no need to be panicking if you make a mistake. It does say it's it's acrylic. It's not the end of the world if you get the wrong colour on the wrong bit of the model. You just paint over it. That's the beauty of uh, acrylic. The same when you're painting pictures, you know, wall hanging art. And I just realised I've gone off camera again. I do apologise. Um, you know, when using acrylics for painting pictures, it's exactly the same. Um, the idea with those is that you start with the darkest colour and work light. Um, and you can do the same with these. I know some people don't like using black undercoat, but because I, um, I'm used to using acrylic paints for my artwork, I always use a black undercoat because that's what gives the for me that's what gives the shadow it's what gives the depth um, I think that using a white undercoat can have a detrimental effect to your pit your uh, your model especially one like this which is supposed to be dark and mean and horrible and nasty if you're using a white undercoat your uh, your actual finished painted figure can be quite um, vivid colour and slightly out of place. I mean, I know you can use a wash, but um, well, it's not a case of can you use a wash. I usually do use a wash. If I use a white, I have a tendency of uh, under priming and undercoating white and then putting a, a wash over the top so I can see where all the shadows are properly because I can't. Um, I can't really tell terribly well. I, I, I find it much easier using a black undercoat than using a white one. But I say it's personal preference. If you would prefer to use a black undercoat, 
use a black undercoat. If you'd sooner use a white undercoat, use a white one. If you'd want a, a grey undercoat, use grey. Again, it's just like the painted figures. You don't have to use black just because I use black. You don't have to use grey because somebody else uses grey. Give it a try. See what you prefer and stick with it. And that's what, if I can get you to understand that, um, it makes the job of, well I'm saying makes the job, it makes your hobby of painting your figures much more easier to do if you f just try different things. You may find that there's a, a step that you've been doing if you do paint figures um, that you're looking for an easier way of achieving the same results. If I've got that for you in one of my videos, fine and dandy. But as I've said time and time again, it's just just that little bit of practice. The time it takes just to practice, um, it's it doesn't take all that much at all. Certainly not. Doesn't take much effort. That takes that little bit of money to get the paints and the brushes, but well, not counting the model, obviously. But I say that's all it takes. Um, but and if you do it wrong, if you if you actually paint it. And when you've painted it, you don't like it. It's not the end of the world. Because what you do is you get some Dettol, Dettol or, equi or equivalent to Dettol. Uh, pour it into a tub. Put your model into the Dettol. Don't dilute it. Let it soak for a while. Take it out. And when I say for a while, I'll put it in before I go to bed of a night. And when I get up the following morning, um, I take the de I take the model out of the Dettol, and um, give it a brush over with an old toothbrush. I'll just get a don't use an old toothbrush. Um, just go to a cheap shop and buy a, a cheap toothbrush it doesn't have to be like Oral B or any of the other big names it can be just like cheap shop's own brand name type of thing shop's own name type of thing um, get a pack of them and just give it a good scrubbing over and you will see the paint come off and your model underneath will be intact unharmed and you can just wash it then with a little bit of uh, warm water and detergent, warm water, not hot. Um, let's give it a little bit of a soak in that. Brush over again with an, uh, another toothbrush. Uh, once you've got the smell of dental away, let it dry, and then come back and paint it again. Buy some if you want to practice. Buy some cheap models. Get some paints. Keep doing that until you're happy with the technique. Simple. No stress with painting these figures. No stress at all. Right, we've done the red. Now we're going on to the green, which is the Caliban green. We're doing all the um, bony areas. We don't want all that much on that. So this is all the areas that are, for want of a better word, bone. Um, and we do our usual trick of painting this all green, then highlighting it with a very bright green and then yellow, and then giving it a wash. Um, and then that will be the, this video over with almost uh, until the wash dries. But 
yeah, so they're saying you've no real reason not to um, try doing it. I mean, I'll start that one again. You've no real, real excuses as to to get out of painting these figures. The only reason you can give yourself and be honest with yourself is you that you just don't want to do it. Which, fair enough, the your, again, your figures, if you don't want to paint them, don't paint them. But I can tell you what, if you paint them, they will look a hell of a lot better than just being burnt plastic or metal. Seriously. They will look a whole lot better. And I'm still waiting for some more clips for the terrain. Um, I got extra ter an extra terrain set for Dead Zone, uh, run out of clips and I've still got a few panels left to fit together so I've ordered, I bought some more clips from uh, Mantic Games so I'm just waiting for them to be delivered. And when I do I shall be sh I'll show you how I put some of the, uh, how I I've been asked um, but, um, oh dear. I've been asked to show how I put my um, buildings together so once I get those clips I will show you and do a video of how I put the clips together um, but so it's, it's very easy uh, but putting them together is easy trying to take the flipping things apart is a pain in the neck so I do um, glue them together um, so I will not be taking these apart once they're done and I've noticed a couple of times I've put the wrong well not the wrong piece but I've put I can either put a piece in upside down or um, a piece of should be a floor as a wall, or as I see as a floor, um, I've used as a wall, but I don't suppose it makes any bit of difference. With the backstory of uh, this game, um, the, uh, all the buildings that are made from these sets, uh, the storage containers that have been used to transport items from one planet to another and the crew of the ship have uh, taken them apart after emptying them and started making uh, you know buildings worthy to live in and uh, a, a quite a practical um, way of solving sort of like a housing problem on a new planet so I said the way I see it is it won't be perfect engineering it's just going to be a group of people uh, just quickly getting uh, shelter made up so it won't be there won't be any deep planning or deep thought going into how they should progress um, and in that case these little mistakes could make it all the more believable at least that's my excuse for making mistakes and I'm sticking to it whether you like it or not <laughs> ha ha right that's the green base coat and the red base coat done uh, once the green dries I will be highlighting that with the paler green but first off what I have been doing is using um, I don't know what the heck that is up to in there but <laughs> right, what I have been using to wash the red parts with is when I can find it two chai violets this time I'm going to have a change I'm going to use Drakenhof 
nightshade. It's a bluey, bluey grey colour. And I think it gives a very nice shadow detail and uh, hopefully it will work appear a lot deeper shadows in this with it with Wasdaka red being a much deeper red than the uh, is it blazing skulls blazing skulls scarlet or whatever probably I can't remember can't quite remember off the top of my head so I'm going to use this one for now once we put the the pink highlights on it um, that is going to be painted over then or washed again with this time the Drucci violet and that will give a pinky purpley shadow to the model which is oops which is what, what we want it's what we're looking for so So once, once firmly dark shadows with this. I'm just hope this the first time I've used this colour on one of these models. I'm just hoping it actually works out the way I uh, I think it might. As I say, it'll just give a, a much stronger shadow with it being um, like a very deep coloured wash. And you can see how it's going now already before it dries. It's um, it is getting into those shadows, shadow areas. It is doing wonders for the dark areas. So when I put that pink over the top of this, it's going to look awesome. Plus, if there's a part of this where the um, the red hasn't fully covered up the black, this Drakenhof nightshade will hide that because it will make it look as though it is still a shadow rather than just bad coverage with the red. But there we are. That's the first coat. Well, that's the base coat and the first wash done. So we'll leave that now to dry. And when we come back, we can start on the highlighting and everything else. But we'll put that to one side for the time being. We'll wash our brush out. And we'll turn our attention back to the barricade. Because now we are going to take our slightly bigger brush we're going to take our known oil and we're going to wash over the barricade just like so trying to find an area where I'm comfortable at the moment with painting it and just keep going off the camera and I do apologize for that there we are so that's if you're wondering what that is I pinned this to the base and that's the bottom of the pin bent over so it uh, hopefully it's going nowhere <laughs> there we go so there's our barricade done and washed as opposed to done and dusted 
So now all it takes is well, now all we're waiting for rather not all it takes now what we're waiting for is the um whoops the null not the null null mode the dragon off nightshade on the previous model to dry and then we can continue. So that's all we can do for this video. So until next time. As always, take care, God bless, and bye for now.